Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Big news today as the blog post was dropped about the October releases coming this month from War Cradle Studios. This month sees a major pre-order going up as there is a new two-player starter set called Fortune and Glory in which the Union takes on the Sultanate. In addition, there is a new terrain box called Icebergs and Glacier set and there is also the Scandinavian support squadrons that were released last month for the first time in the Zions of Jutland box and that are now available separately. No sign of the Egyptians yet though, I suppose those players will just have to be patient for one extra month, but the Sultanate is getting a lot of new toys this month regardless. In addition, those lovely MDF sets from the Normandy kit were uh, now are now being released separately, so you can expand on those as well if you got them last year, or get them separately if you didn't fancy getting the entire set in one go. The big release is of course the two-player starter set, and uh, yeah, they've got an overview picture with what can be found in it, and it looks to be absolutely jam-packed with new plastics, along with a big resin flagship coming for the Sultanate as well. For the Union side we are finally getting their airships, which are these uh, blimp-like constructions, of which you get three that can be used separately as airships, and uh, it seems like they can be joined together as well to create a larger ship, which is the flag flagship scene at the top left here. On top of that there are these five sort of chunkier acron like ships that we see at the bottom leading me to believe that these are uh, five spruce coming to the union side in this box for the sultanate size we side we have the uh, large flagship in resin as can be seen here but you also get three mass two flagship uh, sorry medium air cruisers it seems on top of two different types of mass one sky ships coming in it as well Apart from these uh, Union and Sultanate units, there also seems to be some uh, civilian ships included in these as well, which are these two uh, ships that are shown in the top right of the image, and they also seem to come with smaller escort tokens as well that uh, are seen in the bottom here, along with uh, new SRS tokens, such as what lo looks to be the land uh, assault tokens down at the bottom here, and some smaller ship tokens. I'm not entirely sure what those will be used as. Also an unknown token are these two things here, they look to be cargo tokens that can be dropped. They don't really have a naval a sort of uh, base, neither do they have a uh, ground base like the ground assault tokens have. Um, so I'm very curious what those are. And on top of that we have three SRS tokens that are clearly belonging to the Sultanate, leading me to believe that these are three different uh, spruce for the Sultanate and five SRS that we know belong to the Union. Now the box is called Fortune and Glory and that is because mercenaries very much are at the forefront of this set. It says that it is largely the Honorable Eclipse Company that will be used here and the Honorable Eclipse Company has three possible flagships that are not yet in the Orbat, so expect an update on that one soon. So three different flagships that they can select. The first is the Excelsior class heavy air cruiser. Like I said, these are not in the Orbat yet, but it does seem like the Excelsior class heavy air cruiser comes with a heavy gun battery mounted in the nose and then some regular gun battery here at the side of it to complement it. On the top we find some uh, rocket batteries that may or may not be interchangeable with other weapon systems, we'll have to see. And it comes with uh, a radar dish mounted in the center, so it might have a rule such as a hydrophone relay for instance to detect submarines. The back part of the ship doesn't seem to show you any extra weapon systems on there at least. It does have this large tail part at the end and given how the flight stem is sort of mounted in the center of it, that does mean you have quite a bit of overhang here at the back of the miniature. I think it does look cool though if the base isn't necessarily in the dead center, but uh, stability wise yeah, this is something that you might have to be careful with. The Venture class seems to be quite similar, although it has a different front end, um, which seems to be some sort of Gatling gun, I'm not quite sure which one that will be, the magnetic Gatling gun, or uh, the, the other one, the heavy uh, Gatling gun that, uh, that they have. And it seems like the Custodian class has this thing that vaguely remembers the Solex generator found in the Alliance Orbat, so I'm not quite sure what this is, there's no hints in the current Orbat about uh, this weapon type. Now these airships can also be built as single hulls, and the first one being the Steward class sentry ship, and that one comes with that same weird Solex generator like looking weapon in the front, but again no hints at what that can be. 
The Constellation class attack airship is in the Orbat, however, and that one comes with a heavy gun battery and a single gun battery at the top. So, uh, uh, at the, the front end, I should say. So, uh, that's pretty much what it has. It also comes with uh, some type of uh, bomb weapon, the Freedom Bombs. So, I'm guessing that's something on the underside of the hull that we can't really see in these pictures. The Republic class Cloudraker airship is mentioned in the Orbat and that one comes with an aerial torpedo salvo that you can clearly see here in the front bit and has two Gatling, uh, magnetic Gatling guns so I'm guessing that will be the same thing for, uh, for the big flagship that we've discussed earlier as well. Also something of note, this Republic class Cloudraker airship actually has a different top, one that clearly has the Union symbol, compared to the Ticonderoga class assault airship that has this uh, symbol for uh, the Honorable Eclipse company. So I'm guessing there's going to be a few build options in there that are exclusive to the Eclipse company, or you can just swap out the top bit, uh, the bridge, to represent whatever faction you want them to belong to. Regardless, the Ticonderoga class uh, assault airship definitely comes with a freak ton of different rockets mounted uh, into the top of it. And in addition, the rules state that it has pacifier assault. This is probably why it's called an assault airship. So it can probably launch some Talos tokens uh, from the bottom of the airship as well. It didn't look like there were any Talos tokens represented on the sprue, they were not in the overview, so uh, this might be some of those uh, ships that you actually have to get the other sets from if you want those Talon tokens. And then finally we have the Ranger class recon airship that clearly is an SRS launcher which explains why there are SRS tokens provided in this uh, sprue. And then finally for the Union we have the Bogota class Carryall, which seems to be a logistical type of vessel. And there's something very fun going on about uh, these two pictures. If you look at the one with the back view and the front view, they are clearly carrying different items. I don't know if that's something different on the left and the right side of the ship, if that is uh, the case or if that's an interchangeable part. We'll have to wait and see when we get our hands on these sprues. I'm not entirely sure if War Cradle is going to be sending me one of these sets, I mean, you never know beforehand, but uh, if they do, you can definitely expect a review on the channel. Um, and if they don't, I'm definitely picking up this set, no worries about that, because it seems insane value. And uh, these are mercenaries, so you can in include them in pretty much any force. So this is a two-player starter set that might as well just be a great jumping-off point for any player to expand their force or to even get into the game, as you can use both of them together. So regardless, you will be getting a review of this on the channel. So if you're looking forward to that, make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel for when that time comes. While the Union is getting models from the Honorable Eclipse Company, the Sultanate is getting the Crimson League models this time around. Uh, the Crimson League are their mercenaries, led by uh, the Princess, the daughter of the Sultan, who uh, actually aligned herself with the Covenant of the Enlightened, but uh, decided to leave them after the big schism between the Egalitarians and the Custodians. So uh, she still has quite a bit of a connection with the Enlightened, because her battle fleet allows you to take some smaller enlightened ships uh, in there as well. The blog post also goes on to explain that uh, these uh, Lyceum class aerial dreadnoughts that can be found in the Sultanate half are actually donations or built in the Promethean complex of High, e uh, of High Eden, where they were gifted nine of these vessels to the Sultan in exchange for the city of Constantinople being made a free port for the Covenant of the Enlightened for 99 years to come. Now the Lyceum class aerial dreadnought does have an entry in the Orbat already where it comes with the six rockets but it also has uh, the Chronolath, if I'm not mistaken, in there as well which is uh, typically associated with, uh, with some enlightened tech. Now this generator allows you to uh, sort of play around with the space-time continuum and, and uh, repair damage that your ships have already suffered or if you want to you can actually drag units out of reserves and bring them into it as well uh, although they do receive a hazard token when they do but it is super reliable way to get your reserves into play and basically expands that portfolio of shenanigans that the uh, Sultanate can do through reserves without using any portals per se. 
Now the Orban entry also includes some uh, heavy guns on there. Uh, I'm not seeing them onto the model, so I can only assume that they will be on the underside of the model and perhaps not in view of these pictures. Or, <laughs> like is also possible, the Sultanate Orbat will need an update because I have noticed a couple of discrepancies with the smaller airships in the description and the Orbat entries as well. So again, expect an Orbat update soon. One such difference with the Orbat entry is the Nasser class Skyship. This clearly has a heavy weapon on top and two smaller or rather regular weapon batteries on the side of it while the Orbat entry has it listed with three different rocket batteries so that is already a difference. The next one is the Ausbiri class Skylancer and that one comes with three different rocket batteries while the Orbat only has it listed as two and aerial torpedoes and you can clearly see the aerial torpedo tubes here so this one will need to be updated as well. And while this is a personal preference kind of thing I do like the look of this weapon most as well uh, especially with the torpedo tubes uh, complementing that nice little uh, ridge that you find here at the bottom and uh, you know actually the smaller weapon on the top makes it look slightly more balanced in my uh, my opinion. I also think these ships have an absolutely cool back profile as well with the two thrusters going up so very much thumbs up for the design of these models. And then lastly we have the Mu. Muharab, Muharib, sorry, class Skyrunner, and uh, this is uh, pretty much a question mark. This one isn't in the Orbat at all. It sort of gets uh, this sort of minaret thing instead of a weapon system, uh, but it does have this large opening here at the front, so I don't know what this is going to be. I'm guessing it's going to be an SRS launcher since there seem to be some SRS tokens included, but I'm really not sure. For the Mass 1 ships we have the Hirka class Skycutter, which in the Orbat appears to have uh, aerial torpedoes, which I'm not really seeing on the, the actual model itself. What I am seeing though is a rocket battery, even though the entry has a gun battery in the Orbat, and this thing at the front seems to remind me more of a particle beamer rather than anything else. And while the Hirka does look gorgeous, I think this one absolutely is my favorite from uh, the whole set, in fact, which is odd for a Mass 1 uh, ship, but I just love that little sky sail it has on the side. Currently, the Orbat has it listed as having uh, an aerial torpedo, which, uh, which does make sense. I can see this thing at the side here being aerial torpedo tubes and a particle beamer, uh, well, sorry, an etheric lance um, mounted in the front as well, so I'm guessing that previous part that we saw was also an etheric lance instead. But yeah, the back view of this model just shows how gorgeous it is. I mean, this uh, half sail, this uh, asymmetrical design, I really, really do like it. And uh, yeah, it's the star of the show, if you ask me. And then lastly, the thing that they are very uh, sort of uh, stingy on about any information are uh, the new uh, ships in here, the Titan Passenger Class Heavy Conveyor. Um, that is seemingly a civilian ship that no other uh, faction read, or doesn't have any aesthetic links to other factions uh, but it does seem like it's a civilian ship that was at least sensible enough to arm itself with a gun battery in the front this is the same sort of generic gun battery that we've seen from uh, the platform sets and it does seem to want to protect itself with a shield battery in uh, in the back as well um, that is an option to have it as a sort of uh, surface uh, vessel, but you also can make a uh, an aerial conveyor. And I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be a flyer or if it's going to be a skimmer, but uh, if you ask me, it's the one that looks uh, the coolest, the uh, Olympia passenger class. So uh, if there's an option, if this comes from the same sprue, I'm definitely building the air variants because uh, yeah, I have a, a bit of a weakness for sky ships and uh, yeah, that definitely definitely looks uh, absolutely sexy. This ship does seem to have a pretty neat dividing line. I mean, there's the bit uh, over here that overlaps both halves, it seems, that we uh, that we don't see showing up in the uh in, in the the, the, uh, the standard surface version, if you will. So uh, magnetizing them might be possible, but uh, that back part of it is going to be uh, slightly awkward, I guess. 
There is no extra detail about any of the landing tokens. That's a shame. I would have loved to see some uh, some details on it because in a very, very distant past, there was a preview of those on Discord. And uh, those looked to be uh, landing tokens that had these sort of open carriers at the end. That seems to be changed, but I would really love a, uh, a detail shot of that, including a detail shot of the smaller Mass 1 ship, seemingly, that comes along with it, along with the other tokens. What is a bit of a break from the norm as well seems to be what you're getting in this set. Um, they have uh, only included a single template set, seemingly, in this one. The two deck of cards you're still getting. Uh, there's only a single rule book in there, although there is a Fortune and Glory campaign book coming in there. But the big thing to be excited about is the fact that this now comes with a whopping 80 action dice. So if you're somebody who uh, was always looking around for more action dice to create some of these very large pools that you can create in the game uh, and you want to get this set, uh, you're definitely set for the number of dice. And I think that is a very strong selling point of this set as well. I mean, it is clearly a two-player starter box because you can uh, split it up, but you don't have to because of the mercenary system. And uh, it seems like, uh, yeah, you be uh, getting all of the stuff you could ever need in the game if you if you got this set as a one player super deluxe box if you will and at the end of this entry they also mention uh, some other things that I think is a bit of a shame that there's a bit more detail that needs to come uh, but that, that's the Titan class heavy conveyor which can be built either as a passenger a freight or an oil variant as well but it is not shown on here and I've been checking on the the business to business uh, client website from War Cradle and I couldn't find any additional pictures about that either so let's hope that there's a bit more uh, updates to come in the future about those there are also two merchant ships which I'm guessing or the uh, the smaller mass one ships two times an escort just a generic escort perhaps that any faction can use and two small ship tokens that come along with it as well along with two ground assault detachment tokens seeing as all of these are in twos i'm suppose i'm guessing that's two sprues that you're getting on there with uh, one sprue being able to build a titan class heavy conveyor or the olympia skimmer version um, one merchant ship, one escort, one small ship token and one ground assault detachment token. Apart from that big box, there's also the Iceberg and Glacier set coming in as well. So if you want some neat little terrain to fight your fortunes and glory campaign on, you can now do so. There are eight icebergs including, included in this set. And I do wonder just how big they will be because from the pictures at the start of the blog post, you can see that these come in a medium sized box, the tall one, uh, which is uh, quite a bit of a step up compared to uh, the, uh, the island set that we had. The island set I always thought were gorgeous bits of terrain, but they were a bit on the small end of the scale, meaning they didn't have as much of an impact on the game as I would have liked. Maybe these icebergs are quite a bit bigger, I mean, if they have to fit into one of those medium boxes one can assume that they are a bit more chunky. And if you really want to, you actually have pictures of each and every one of the different icebergs included in them. I have to say, some of these do have some nice little uh, flat tops to them. And uh, there's a bunch of different cool pictures going around in the community of people who have made foam islands with nice flat bits and then basically stuck on extra additional parts such as uh, gun systems or uh, landing strips, uh, which are sp uh, parts from uh, carriers etc so uh, it looks like you can do that with this set as well should you so desire I also love the simplicity of the description of this box this box contains eight times icebergs nice and simple does what it says on the tin and then finally, the Scandinavian support squadrons are also available, which is great news for those of you wanting to include more of these cool little Valkyries in their force. And uh, yeah, you'll have plenty of Fenrirs because one of these sprues actually has two of them. I have received them. The review is up on the site, on uh, the channel as well. So definitely check those out if you want to see what's on these different sprues. I think they're amazing value and it's incredibly fun just how compatible all of these new uh, support squadrons are with the frontline squadrons in the, uh, the Scandinavian fleet as well. Because yeah, there's definitely reasons to get more of these because uh, with the Thor class, the Loki class, the Angerboda class, the Heimdall, the Fenrirs, the Valkyries, the Baldur class, 
and the Gephion class. There are multiple options in there and uh, yeah, you definitely want to get your hands on more of these. Um, I personally have got the Scions of Jutland box three times and I still want three of these extras just so I can uh, have more options, including 12 different Valkyries. Um, to have uh, some fun games with because uh, yeah, that's pretty much what you can do with the Asgard and that's pretty much what I want to do as well. And then lastly from War Cradle Scenics, they've got something that is very much geared towards bolt action games because uh, yeah, these uh, painted or pre-primered MDF kits don't need any painting. Uh, after they've been assembled, they pretty much end up looking like this because uh, War Cradle Scenics very cleverly uses the sort of scorch marks that you get from a laser printer to, uh, to really get some details on those walls as well. You can paint them if you want, if you want to make them look extra fancy, but I don't think you really have to because this looks brilliant as is. And the cool thing about it is they really think about how you have to uh, play games with them because they all come with detailed interior on top of uh, the uh, rather lovely texture you get on the outside. And they're really clever with the way that they stack the MDF with these sliding barn doors. So this, this instant feel of uh, a three-dimensional effect to them on top of all of the engraving on the MDF too. And there's quite a bit of flexibility as well with how you build them because there's parts in there to make them as uh, ruined buildings which is a bit more better for your infantry to be visible as well or you can have them as intact buildings too which is all just absolutely brilliant and uh, that's the good thing about it being made by a company that uh, has gamers uh, in the back of their head as uh, their first uh, and most important thing to uh, to take care of not just shareholders and yeah, we all know how long it can take to actually build a table and get all of that scenery painted up. Um, so having to, or having the option to skip that uh, step and just go to something that looks great out of the box with all you having to do is the, uh, the assembly part is definitely a, a big selling point about the MDF kits made by, uh, by War Cradle Scenics. And there we have it, that were the different entries that can be found in uh, this uh, month's blog post, a big month with a new two player starter set. So uh, yeah, definitely some cool things. So let me know in the comments as well. What do you think is uh, the funnest bit about uh, the new releases? What are you looking forward to the most? Are you picking this up even if you do not play Sultanate or Union just to have them as mercenary options for your battle fleet? I would love to know. That was it for me though. I do hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye.